Let's look at how row compression works. Row compression, starting in SQL 2008 R2 and later, starts by implementing Unicode compression. The amount of space this saves you depends on what locale or language your SQL Server is using English, Turkish, Chinese, etc. English usually results in about a 50% savings. Unicode compression works by converting Unicode fields to non-Unicode fields wherever possible. The next thing that happens is all fixed length fields are converted to variable length fields. For character fields, this is fairly self-explanatory because we're used to dealing with variable length character fields. But SQL will also convert numeric fields, which are usually fixed, to variable length as well. For example, an integer field normally takes four bytes of storage. But when row compression is enabled, SQL Server will look into the value stored in that field. If, for example, the value stored is two, SQL knows that it only takes one byte to store that value. So it will convert that four byte field to a one byte field. As a side note, decimal fields are stored using the var decimal data type, which was introduced in SQL Server 2005 SP2. So if your table already uses that data type, those fields will not be compressed anymore. And lastly, row compression implements a new variable length row format that reduces the metadata storage requirements. If you remember all those bytes we used uh, to indicate record types and offsets that we talked about back in section 3. This reduces the row overhead from 2 bytes down to 4 bits, or 1 half of a byte. Also, blanks and nulls are stored within the metadata info, so they take up no room at all in the actual data portion of the record. By definition, Row compression only operates on a single row at a time. So let's look at an example. Here we have two rows. Each row consists of two columns. The first is a small integer field, and the second is a fixed length 20 character field. A small integer field requires two bytes for storage, and the char 20 field requires 20 bytes for a total row size of 22 bytes per record. And here we're ignoring the two byte slot array entry for the rows here. So these two bytes require, or these two rows require 44 bytes to store. Now let's turn on row compression and see what happens. In the first record, SQL Server realizes that the value one that was stored in the small int field only needs one byte for storage, not two. So it reduces that field down to one byte. It also notes that the string I love cheese only requires 13 bytes to store, not the full 20. So it reduces that field as well. The second row cannot be compressed because the value of 32,700 requires the full two bytes of the small int field to store. And the word compartmentalization is 20 characters long, so it fills the entire char 20 field. So after row compression has been turned on, these two rows now require 36 bytes to store instead of 44. That's about an 18% reduction in size.